ladies and gentlemen. I am Robbie Crawford. Welcome in to In the Bag. ABB, how you doing today? Doing all right. Hey, we were talking off air. We're starting our weeklies back up here, you know, as it gets a little a little warmer and the daylight comes back. But, you know, I'm stuck in that bottom third. You talk about thirds, right? We have our top third, our middle third, our bottom third. Quick sand down here in the bottom third for me right now. But, you know, there's some dedication I have to put in with putting and field work that I just can't do right now. So I just got to try to have fun while I'm out there. So I did have fun. I did get to play disc golf before work today. So we'll count that as a win, right? That's true. That's true. We we are always grateful. I mean, that's I have to remind myself on a, a regular basis. Like I'll come off of a a video where I did not play well mm-hmm. or I did not film well, and then it's like, really, that's that's what I want to be upset about today. Is mm-hmm. oh yeah, I didn't draw the frisbees well. Like, mm-hmm. bro, there are people that literally stared at our spreadsheet all day, and that's true. That was that was tough. So, yep. um, we are we are grateful. For this being our job, and we're grateful uh, for, for y'all's you. continued support yeah. as you do this. Brad, Disc RPM, what's going on over there? Yeah, so we teased it last episode, but we have hit uh, 1,056 members in the, in the back community on Disc RPM as of the filming of this video, which is on Thursday. So thank you all for that. That's awesome. It's amazing. We love seeing all of you in there, putting some faces to, you know, it's just me and Robbie talking to a screen here right now. But it, it is. I feel like I'm getting to know you all, which is really cool. See your cool disc in your bag, which is, again, a great feature there. Um, and we did promise a giveaway. So, Robbie, let's tell them how they're going to win their Birdie Pro. Absolutely. So we are, uh, as a little teaser, uh, in the future, mm-hmm. you can already see it happening with other Near foundation future. podcasts yeah. that uh, we're all kind of branching into our own channels in terms of, like, it's not – the foundation podcast network still exists, but we're all going to get our own channels for the opportunity to honestly just make more content for you guys. Mm -hmm. That's more specific. Um, like I was chuckling because someone commented on a pig, a video the other day and they're like ranking the disc golf podcasts or ranking the foundation podcast. And they had us at the bottom, but then another dude commented and was like, in the, what are you talking about? In the bags. Amazing. So we understand we're not for everyone, but for those of you who like listening to us, we appreciate it. And we're near the top of your list. So one of the ways that we're branching out is we are making an Instagram so that we can make like clips of Brad throwing clips of me, maybe doing this with like people in real life. Like that would be so fun, right? If we Mm -hmm. have like people pop up in the shop and it's like, all right, quick rundown of your bag, bang, 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 like a 90 second in the bag. Mm -hmm. That would be super fun. Yeah. It'd be great. So we are dropping an Instagram and the cap the title of it is in the bag pod that's all one word in the bag pod you'll recognize the logo immediately so in order to win birdie pro if you're part of disc rpm all we're asking is that you head over to in the bag pod give us a follow we're going to post a picture by the time this episode goes episode goes live of um birdie pro all you got to do is comment on that picture what is your favorite disc in your bag right now? So follow us in the bag pod, comment, and we will pick a winner and we'll announce it live on next week's episode and shoot you a message. So, mm-hmm. yeah, we're excited. And yeah, thanks again, Steve, for donating that. And we're excited to get it out to you. I, and I was typing in the message or the episode title. We're on episode 91. Crazy. We're on 91? Yeah, 91. That's, that is crazy. Like, yeah. Yeah, because I remember us talking about we did something for like reflection and reflections and all that. And it was like, oh, yeah, this is really fun. This is really great. But do we save this for 100? And it was like, no, 100 is going to be like months and months away. But mm-hmm. this is 91. We're yeah. like, a month we'll be and a half in away. April. Yeah. Is that in my math? Yeah. Yeah. Like April ish. Yeah. So, hey, comment below. What do you guys want to see for episode 100? Do we want to just. We want to just speed run everyone we can that's been a guest. Do we want to do that? Do we want to do a special episode? What What do we want to do? Yeah. What What y'all pick episode 100 and we will- In the will, bag live? In the bag live? In the bag live. That would be, that would be something. Mm-hmm. Like I, mm, mm. Let us we know. got ideas. Let us know. But hey, before we can get to episode 100, we got to get through episode 91. So let's yes, bring sir. in our guest today, Paul. Welcoming into the podcast, the most famous Paul on the internet at this exact moment uh, mm-hmm. when it comes to disc golf, <laughs> right? Like, we yeah. can go ahead and make that claim. Yeah, I think uh, so. Paul, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well, very well, Robbie. How are you? 
man, we're living the dream, living the dream. Excellent. I, my Excellent. voice feels the more I've talked, I was like, is it just morning voice? And it's not really going away. So I apologize, audio listeners. I like, I, I had think an it's asthma. Soothing. I it's had like soothing. an asthma issue earlier this week and I have been trying to get rid of it and it's just not working. So it's no, fine. It, it sounds just like typical Robbie. It, it, you don't I, sound any different to me. That's fantastic. Then uh, yeah. that I like to hear because I do not feel like normal Robbie. So uh, Paul, we are super excited to have you on um, Paul. We got to meet at the Northeast disc golf expo and yes. I am always, I am always a fan of passionate people. And I will tell you all that when Paul and I chatted, he was telling me, hey, I've applied to be on In the Bag and through all the different forms y'all have had, which immediately lets me know Paul is a longtime listener because we have mm-hmm. changed the form to apply to get on the show a multitude of times. Yep. Uh, and Paul, you stick with us through yes. all of it. So yes. uh, grateful to have you on. We literally scheduled it right there. Like <laughs> we mm-hmm. put it on the calendar. It was awesome. So I'm grateful for you. One of the easiest guests I've had to schedule ever. Uh, that's not throwing shade at any of our previous guests, but it was nice. We locked it in. You're here on time. Absolutely. It was amazing. So thank uh, you like so much. I've been anxiously waiting for this uh, since we talked at the uh, Northeast Disc Golf Expo. I was like, oh, man, it's the 15th yet. Is it the 15th? Here it is. Hey, <laughs> you're here. Episode 91. So we're we're excited to have you. And um, again, I don't see the bag before the episode, but when I opened it, Robbie sent it to me right before we hopped on live. And I was like, wow, this is a very interesting bag. Um, so I'm excited to talk through it. Um, I, I think I see your thought process in the bag, but I'm excited to talk through it. But before we can talk through it, we need to get to know you as a player. So Rob, mm-hmm. let's run them through our get to know you section. Absolutely. So Paul, how, how long have you been playing disc golf? I've been playing disc golf for about 20 years, uh, more off then on uh it was kind of like a fun recreational thing of like hey it's been six months since i played let's go throw some discs with the buddies and with my current job i travel a lot so it's kind of like it's it's cheap fun when you're away from home and in a hotel you can go play disc golf so i kind Mm -hmm. of got back into it again and went on a trip with five discs and came home with 12 so it was like oh Mm -hmm. Well, I, I guess I'm buying disc golf again. So one of my favorite things to do when I was traveling for work, cause I just kind of started playing at the end of that career was, you know, I was flying all over the U S so I would find, like I'd go on a U disc and find these, these little mom and pop, like disc golf shops and stuff like that. And it's hard. It's hard not to fill your suitcase, you know, just leave a couple pairs of clothes at the hotel for someone yeah. to find and then throw a couple extra discs in there. Yeah. Leave, leave the dirties at the hotel, leave all the socks there and come home with new discs. Yeah. Yeah, what's, what's, what, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. We don't need to wear socks. Uh, yeah. You can't socks throw socks <laughs> near as far as you can throw frisbees. So no, you well, can't. Um, Depends on what day. That that's true. That's true. If you're in, if you're in your lower thirds, uh, they it may be a tough. A, I may have played better with socks this morning, Robbie, than my discs. So that's my bad, dude. My bad, brother. <laughs> I'm not trying to rub. I had a bad room. round, Paul. So this morning, so that's I'm a little hurt still, but it's okay. That, but hey, right. Paul, tell yeah. us about your putting. Let's walk through there, Robbie. I love it. Let's do putting. Uh, So we set you up on the putting green and we're like, all right, Paul, you got to make 10 putts from 15 feet, 10 putts from 25 feet and 10 putts from 40 feet. How many are you making at each station? Uh, 10 foot or the 15 foot one, I'd say I'm probably seven to eight. Okay. Where I'm at with 15, 25 foot, um, four or five. Okay. And then 40 foot it, drops dramatically uh maybe hitting chains and maybe getting the lucky one or two in at 40 foot okay and i i've had a weird thing of putting when i started putting it was more of a the whole like flopsy mopsy putt like lay up for it and kind of come in from a high angle and who needs chains they cost extra Mm. um and now i'm trying to change it up to like just go for the chains go for the chains and if you yeah. run past you run past yeah that's, so I, i'm trying yeah i, I did a that. putting lesson with someone yesterday and i just kind of he told me like oh i'm uh, and he'll know immediately who he is uh listening but he said oh i'm trying to putt like simon lazat and i said great awesome show me what your putt looks like 
and he went to putt, and it looked a lot more like James Conrad than it did Simon Lazat. And if you're familiar with both of their strokes, one of them is spin putter, and one of them is a deep push putter. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I was like, so do you want to putt like Simon, or do you want to do this? And so we ended up spending about 45 minutes just trying to build that putt of a similar thing you were talking about, Paul. If he was trying to throw these big hyzers and drop them into the basket, and he was like, mm-hmm. I'm getting rollaways, I'm getting all this different stuff. I just don't know what to do. And I was like, all right. So we switched in more of a spin putt. And then when I had him, he'd miss one. And I'd be like, you got to learn to get comfortable with those. Cause if you're going to throw them straight at the basket, that's okay. Like you're going to make more often than you miss, but just know that like, you're going to leave yourself. If you, if you air ball, it's going past. So it's, I, I love when people modify their putt out of something that like, is a, a base level something and then just growing into it. It's, it's a really fun feeling. Um, but that's the green Paul. If we put you in a field and we said, Hey, we got to, we're going to put a basket out there. You've got to throw a backhand and a forehand. How far can you comfortably and consistently reach that basket? Backhand. I'm probably around two fifty to 60. Okay. If I'm real lucky on the backhand, maybe I can hit the 275. Um, forehand, I feel a little bit more comfortable if it's a longer, a longer thing. Um, I, I got a little bit more comfortably on the forehand. Um, probably about 275, 280. Okay. I, I mean, it's only like a five foot window there, but. No, I mean, that's, <laughs> I, I honestly, I love that you have it that dialed like mm-hmm. that is, and I, when you say that your bag, like there are just pieces of your bag that start falling into place mm-hmm. a lot faster. Uh, yep. and so very, very excited for this conversation. Uh, Paul, our final question for like the get to know you phase of this is what would you say is the biggest strength of your game? <clears throat> I think the biggest strength of my game is not tee shots and not putting yeah. I, it's somewhere in the middle of that whole like second shot or third shot if it may be if it's mm. a scramble or whatever so it fairway i guess would be i think the strength of my game yeah sort of like mm. making it easy to close out a hole yeah and, and maybe being the old guy on the course playing with all the new guys I can, I can imagine like it's a, there is uh, I have a friend, um, his name is Ben uh, and he listens as well. And Ben throws about your same distance on backhand, but does not have the forehand option. So his turnover game is pretty nice. Um, But Ben is one of those people that were like, how from 50 and 60 feet are you just like, you're either in the basket or you're not really putting like, how do you do that every single time? And he's like, Robbie, I land 50 to 150 feet short of the basket everywhere I go. I had to get really good at this. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Respect. Uh, Like that's fair. And because of that, we'll joke that like when Ben's on, he has, he has a nice spin putt as well. And he's just like 50 feet out from the basket. And me and my friend Randy will look at each other and say, Oh, Mm-hmm. All right, Ben's in, so we got to make our putts. Uh, so like it's <laughs> it's wild y'all's ability yeah. to score consistently with what would be on the uh, like shorter end of distance, mm-hmm. just for overall disc golf. Obviously, depending on what courses you play. Um, yeah. So hopefully, we can throw in some more options and things like that into your bag to try to help with this, uh, help with some scoring capability. So. Uh, a feature that we're going to talk to disc RPM about, about getting in there. What are you putting with out of your putters here? What am I putting with? What am yeah. I consistently putting with? I am, I have them all right here in front of me. I'm consistently putting with the old school Omega super soft. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's, that's my consistent putter. I was recently trying to think about changing my putter to trying to use the glitch and I, I tried it yesterday from a longer hole. Like, let's go for it. Just let's just try it and just zing it at the chains. And with all that glide, it just kind of kept going. I'm like, mm-hmm. well, that's at the next tee pad. <laughs> yep. That's a long way to come back. Mulligan. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
and back to the omegas uh oh, yeah, no. yeah exactly so that's that's my default is that omega super soft and it's it's one that's like i don't think it's ever going to come out of the bag as much as i want to try and find a new one like that one's just really comfortable yeah, yeah. i was going to ask you because i think putting putters are kind of subjective in my opinion absolutely um so what do you like about the omega just for people who may not have thrown the omega and a little spoiler to the end of the episode we have a full we're now carrying millennium discs and we have a full uh stock going up this friday when everyone's listening to this uh episode and there's some great feeling plastic in millennium and a lot of millennium's history is like older like innova molds and combine combining some innova like you know molds together to make something great um so what is it about the omega that you like for those who may have not have touched one before for me it was it was a a disc I got from my my brother in law, uh, like fifteen, seventeen years ago. So it's been with me for a very long time. Uh, we used to play down in Fresno, California, and it would get really hot. And he had one, and like when it would hit the chains, it would just like fold in half and just like melt into the chains. And I was like, "That's the putter I want to use." And then he ended up getting me one, and mm-hmm. I've been using it ever since. I just I like the softness. I like the the pliable where I the nervous tick with like hold the putter and bend it, then tweak it back and then putt. Mm-hmm. It's just it's soft. It's it's nice. Yeah. Hand feel very neutral putter from yeah. what I understand. Yeah. I've got I I could be like crazy off base with this, but I like I think the Omega and the P two are like supposed to be really similar. Uh I I've heard that as well. I've I've held a P2 in a in a shop in Nebraska and it was it felt very much like the Omega Super Soft. Okay. Um, yeah. And actually I did purchase at the at the Disc Golf Expo I did purchase a uh, another Omega Super Soft cuz I was always afraid of like losing this one. Yeah. But then I I bought one I'm like this is just a wall hanger. It's just going to hang up on a mm-hmm. wall and it, the stamp's too nice to even throw. I'm like, nope, <laughs> it's a wall hanger. Hey, I love it. I've got a a friend who was putting with uh, pennies and has recently switched to Omegas and because he was like, yeah, I just think that the pennies are not connecting with me and he was locked into it and I was like, just try a different putter and he's like, yeah, I think I landed on Innova made P2s. I was like, okay, brother, respect. Mm -hmm. Uh, That is that is a tough, Mm -hmm. tough putter to find. But then when you find out, oh, yeah, it's like the Omega, a couple other options out there. So, yeah. I, the other putter that I would keep your eye out for, Paul, is if you like the glitch and the flight of the glitch, but I know you were mentioning the glides a little too much. Um, we It's an option that we consider, but we didn't have any at our shop. Uh, but the Watt, when the Watt comes out in electron mm-hmm. plastic, which is their base plastic, I would be shocked if there isn't a whole slew of people oh, sure. yeah. that are going to switch to Watts as putters because okay. putting with the glitch because it's lightweight it can almost throw off like especially if you're trying to put yeah. in any wind whatsoever horrifying yes. that's so exactly what i noticed yesterday at the course i was playing at yesterday with the glitch it was windy and it was just like with that mm-hmm. lightweight it was just like mm, i'm gone yeah <laughs> mm-hmm yeah and you don't no one loves using if a if a disc is not reliable or it's just a little squirrely it's like you end up leaning on it so much less so uh i would definitely keep your eye on on that i am not trying to say that the electron watts are coming out this year but i'm not trying to not say right that i believe <laughs> electron the solid watts gray area of yeah, where yeah, they yeah, yeah, may yeah, yeah. or may not yeah if i were in vegas i would be putting money on the release of those um all right but then again my mind's way off because and have made some halo monstrosity uh and yeah. never saw that one coming either, not the so. place robbie not the place uh, not the place yeah <laughs> center center keep it calm keep it calm <laughs> all right so you have the glitch in your bag as well that you throw um yeah glitch and a g star avr so i'm i we have an idea we've had people come on the show and talk about a glitch uh in the past things like that g star avr is something that I would say you're probably the first person to have a G star AVR in 91 episodes. I actually don't think that is 
even yeah. like a bold yeah. stretch. I think that's true. Yeah, I think it's true. No, and it's it was one of those things because uh, being here in Idaho with the cold and the winter and everything, I'm like, I, I want to get some G-Star plastic discs from Innova for the winter where they're a little softer, a little more pliable. So because I, I've heard stories of people using harder discs in the winter and then they hit something, then they just snap in half. I'm like, I don't want to snap my disc. Let, let's get some softer plastic in the bag to, to throw that for the winter time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ironically enough, you have a mold in there that Connor just threw into a tree and exploded. So because oh, no. of that reason, yeah, a Panther. So a Panther. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, the, my Panther is actually on the cusp of like, is it going to stay in the bag? I'm not sure. Makes sense. So what does the AVR do for you? Just, is just a more comfortable throwing putter for you for like closer approach shots? Yeah. That's kind of what I use it as. I, I'm using the AVR or the zone as those closer approach shots. And more mm-hmm. typically, I'll use the zone for longer approach shots, you know, 100-something foot approach shots. Mm-hmm. You forehanding and backhanding the zone? Uh, it depends on where the lie is. If I'm behind a tree, forehand. If I'm in the open, it's probably a backhand. Yeah. I'm... You know, I've had this like stance that I do not like to backhand the the zone, but I've after today's round, I'm like I just need to get over it and just start throwing the zone on backhand as well. It just doesn't make sense to, to throw carry like a forehand and backhand version of the same exact disc. Pretty much, it just mm-hmm. it's wasting uh, space in my bag for other stuff. But I always like to ask because I I think there's maybe a few people out there like me, but I'm glad that you're you're the smart one who's throwing them on forehand and backhand. So that makes <laughs> Again, a lot of sense. It, it depends on where the lie is. Sure. If it's behind a tree, then it's forehand all day. Mm-hmm. If it's in the open, depending on what the distance is or, or which way the basket is, it's either mm-hmm. forehand or backhand. Yeah, I hear that. So that takes us up to mid ranges. Or is that where you want to go next, Robbie, or do you want to work from the top down? Uh yeah, no, I mean I think we can I think we can just kind of walk up because we're coming back to putters. Uh and Brad, did that conversation kind of give you a for sure. A hundred percent. Yeah. And for those of you who aren't, are, aren't watching this and can see the bag right now, um, as we like, we're out of like the putt and approach section. Now we're going into the, like the mids fairways and drivers. It's a very unique look because typically we'll see people that have like, you know, you're looking left to right and you have discs spaced out from left to right, from overstable to understable and kind of everything in between. Yours is all very neutral, like on the center line going up mm-hmm. minus your you know your mids are a little more spread out and your nine speeds are a little bit more spread out but everything else is pretty down this neutral line so before we like jump into your mids what's your like thought on like riding this neutral line with disc was that on purpose or did it just kind of happen it, it just kind of happened i mean when i started buying discs years ago it was like oh the <clears throat> pardon me the the all the terminology of stable overstable understable it was like Stay away from understable. Those are scary. Like they are not reliable. Run away. Stick with stable or overstable. Mm-hmm. And for a lot of years, I was only getting stable, overstable. Then started kind of getting into the understable. It was like, oh, it's not as scary as, as I originally thought. Mm-hmm. Once you're kind of learning how to do everything of like, oh, th- this is what all this new uh, fancy terminology is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, I th- yeah, I think it's, and it's, it's just kind of funny that that all just kind of landed on that neutral line, but it makes sense if you're, ter- if you're just kind of thinking like, Hey, I need like these middle of the road discs. And I think maybe that's helped you being a very like close distance on your forehand and backhand. There's a, I don't, you don't have a lot of like choices to make. And I, I'm going to guess that you probably release on a little bit of hyzer on your forehand if I had to guess. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, it really. And all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess your long your furthest flying forehand disc is your beast. Actually, the one the disc I've thrown the furthest according to you disc measurement was my turn. Okay, that okay. was my second guess. To be fair, and so I, yeah. I I actually get my wave to go further than my beast. Mm-hmm. That's good. We we like that. We like that. I mean, yeah. not a lot further, but like you yeah. know enough. Two, hey, two feet is still further. <laughs> That's fair. I was going to say ten. If, if ten feet is the difference between a twenty foot putt and a thirty foot putt, and that is a drastic difference. Yep. In makeability, so mm-hmm. I am. I I 
never belittle a shot in the middle, they say. Mm -hmm. So speaking of sorry about the tangent. Yeah, sorry about the tangent, everybody. But yeah, let's get back to the middle. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. It gives us a nice little preview. You know, people are like, Mm -hmm. oh, I'm curious about that. I see what Brad was doing. He's trying to entice you guys to listen to the whole episode and not just skip to the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Little podcaster over here. 91 Mm -hmm. episodes in. Hey, BB, he means business. Here we go. Mm -hmm. So you got four (laughs) mids in the middle. Um, This is if if you're looking at the chart it would be hard to argue there's not some overlap occurring mm-hmm. in this section uh so it makes me happy to hear that already you're like oh the panther mm-hmm. might be coming out not because i'm not happy because it's a panther i'm just more yeah. so you can feel that so talk us through those four mids okay well i realized i didn't take the one mid out of the main bag cuz okay. they're at the north East Disc Golf Expo. I had my mind mender. Simon was there. I went and had it signed. It's removed from the bag. It's a wall hanger now. So I'm like, I'm not even going to throw it anymore. I don't want to lose it. Okay. So I'm down to three mids. Sorry okay. about that. No, that's can fine. I, can I ask you about the mind bender first before we skip over it? Sure. Um, my experience with the mind bender, I bagged one for a while and it was just very straight. Like I, I really couldn't get under stability out of it, and maybe I didn't give an opportunity to. Um, for you and someone like throwing your distance, did, did it actually have a little stability? Did you did you have a little finish on yours, or was it pretty straight still? It was just it was just dead nut straight, mm-hmm. and I I loved it. I mean, obviously when it would slow down with the spin, it would kind of drop off one way or the other, depending on you know if you went backhand or forehand. But mm-hmm. the drop off from the main line you're on was maybe four or five feet mm-hmm. and it was just like this thing is awesome i yeah. i liked it a lot yeah i liked mine a lot too i think just i had some overlap and I, I really again as i was trying to like branch out and have like less of every single shot variation covered and more like a little bit of gapping between my mids it just kind of naturally fell out but i always i love the feel i love the flight of it but it's like oh well i can kind of get a hex to fly like that or i can kind of get an origin to fly like that so i don't mm-hmm. really need that in between but I always like to to ask, was there ever any overlap between or like shot confusion or shot selection confusion between, hey, I need to use my MD1 here or do I need to use my hex? Did you have that? Not really, because uh, I, I, I had the mind bender a very short time. Um, okay. It was in my bag for maybe maybe a month at the most. And mm-hmm. then once it got signed, it was like, you're out. You're, <laughs> you're a wall hanger now. Mm-hmm. Are they giving you kind of the same flight though? Between the mind bender and the hex? Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty much. I, I think that the hex, it's the hex has a little more fade than what the mind bender does mm-hmm. at the mm-hmm. at the tail end of the flight. But it's virtually the same flight. Yeah. See, it's funny you say that because I don't know if you can see Paul. This guy right here uh behind me mm-hmm. is my Simon signed hex. So okay. that's so funny that like <laughs> you have the hex and the MD one and you got the MD one signed hex stays in, whereas I like had both as well. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's a funny, funny balance, but I I'm with you on that. Um, your hex, one of the things I appreciate about a disc RPM, I'm trying to tell based on like the picture of it, mm-hmm. your hex looks pretty se- it, Am I being deceived? Is the gray just really light on the stamp or is it pretty seasoned? The gray on the, the edge of the disc? Like the, 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 the stamp. Center. Yeah, and the uh, stamp in the center. No, it's it's pretty light. And okay. it's it's a it's a fairly new disc. Um long time long time Innova Innova only thrower, then just started kind of opening up as you see in my bag, it was just like let's let's try other brands. The more I listened to your to your podcast, it was like, oh let's let's try this. I think the hex was like my first non Innova purchase. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it was like, ooh, I I like this. I like it, this. It's a it is such a cheat code disc. Like it's it's hard for, for me sure. because I love the distance the hex gives, but I like the shot shaping that other discs give mm-hmm. me, if that makes mm-hmm. any sense. And it's like I have to decide when I have the hex in there. Like it's almost to me the same world of like, oh, I have like a stalker and then I have my passion that both do about the same thing, but the passion just goes farther. It's like, do I want to put the hex in there and then also have something else just for 
the distance, things like that. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. very, very curious. I actually am thinking about it. The hex maybe. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm a lot of discoveries. You know how Paul, <laughs> I appreciate Paul. Tell us what you told us before you went, like what you did yesterday uh, in preparation for this, because I think uh, that it's pretty unique. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I, I went and did a little bit of my homework and uh, played around at disc golf and tried to really focus in on the disc that I don't use often because mm. I kind of figured that would be coming up in question in here. And so I can kind of have a better idea of like, okay, this one that I don't use very often when they ask, what does this do for me? I can answer that question. <laughs> so I, again, I, I think I've done the homework well enough. I, I have one I didn't throw yesterday or a couple of them I didn't throw yesterday that my Sidewinder and my Thunderbird, which they're both like right there on the opposite side of the thing. And it's like, well, this one is that if I do it backhand and it's this, if I do it forehand. So I'm carrying the same disc twice. Mm -hmm. If you just Mm -hmm. throw it opposite way. So I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, maybe one of those will be coming out. I'm not sure. Mm, Um, but yeah, that, that's what I did yesterday. Try to get all of my homework done so I can talk appropriately about what I have. And we appreciate that because it's, it's always tough when we ask a question of a guest and you were like, oh, so what's that disc do for you? Oh man, it just flies like real straight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, (laughs) it is. That is that it Bueller. Uh, So (laughs) what a, what a time. Yeah. Um, so you've had the dune in there. Yes. I'm fascinated what the dune does for you. With this, looking at the hex and the panther options, what's the dune do for mm-hmm. you as a difference? The dune, it's probably I I use it more as a. So when I said earlier, I use my zone as like a hundred foot approach disc. I'm kind of using the dune as like it's like a hundred plus approach type disc, mm. and using it for that. Um, it, and it's the one I'll, I'll tend to kind of lean on if it's a really long putt where I'm going to try and give my chance to make it, give myself a chance to make it. I'll chuck the dune cause it's still fairly straight, but it's got a nice little finish on it as well. Um, you know, more of a, I guess, utility type disc. Mm-hmm. So would you describe your dune as more overstable than your hex? Like, does it yes. have more finish? Okay. Yeah. 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 That's, I'm happy to hear you say that because I literally pulled the hex out of my bag because of the dune. Like that mm-hmm. was 100% necessary. Well, so, and, I, and I think the dune might be the reason why the Panther, you know, gets moved down to, to my son who's budding in disc golf also go, Hey, here you go. And, mm-hmm. and the Panther was one that I, was purchased because I lost a Panther 20 something years ago and it was my favorite disc then. So I'm like, I have to get this again. And I found it and I got it and I was like, this, this isn't as great as I remembered it. <laughs> it was, it was better memories than it is a uh, function. <laughs> yeah, for sure. The Panther, I, when I, when I do lessons, I have a bag full of odd discs that I take for lessons. Like I take kind of the least popular molds of a lot of different manufacturers And that's my, my like lesson bag, because when I do lessons with people, like if I were to do a lesson with you, Paul, and I was like, all right, I want you to show me how you throw your hex. I want you to show me how you throw your, uh, Panther, all that, like you would be throwing them, but you're familiar with those discs. So Mm -hmm. a lot of people will slightly modify how they throw their discs. Whereas if I'm like, all right, what I want you to do is I just want you to show me how you throw. And I hand you a mocking bird. You're looking at it like. I, I'm not throwing a mockingbird before. I'm some, lots of people don't even know what that disc is. Yeah. What does this thing even do? Yeah. And so then you don't get to cheat yourself by knowing mm-hmm. how the disc is going to fly and preparing accordingly. You just got to throw your most natural throw. Uh, and I have several Panthers in that bag for mm-hmm. that reason, because I feel like so few people actually know the Panther these days. Mm-hmm. 
So I love that. Uh, okay. Jumping into the leopard three and the TL. What yes. do they do? Um, leopard three uh, in the G star is the, the typical, like it's, it's a longer shot off the T pad, but it's not so long where I got to pull out, you know, for, for my new alarm, pull out the, the big guns. Um, it's kind of like, it's the 180 to, you know, 225 range of like, okay, that's a leopard. Um, and I, I get some shot shaping out of it as well, depending on the mm -hmm. Heiser or Anheuser release angles again with doing it both backhand and forehand. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was, it was one, I, I had another leopard three in my bag, which my, my son is claimed as his now. So I was like, Oh course, man, yeah. like I, I gotta get another one. And the, the leopard three I have in G star came in the G star set with the Valkyrie and the AVR. Okay. Yeah. I, that, I, I love that they do offer a multitude of starter set packs mm -hmm. type deal with different plastics. So, um, so what's the TL do differently? A little more stability to it. Yeah. It, it's a lot straighter of a disc and and actually since i've got the tl and gotten a couple other things it's a disc where it's kind of like i forget i have it in my bag for a straighter mm -hmm. shot and i'll i'll end up pulling the hex if it's that type of range and use the hex where i would have used the tl before i had the hex mm -hmm. so it's kind of it's it's in that weird like hey i'm here but i'm not <laughs> yeah yeah it, it, it's the guy that came to the party just to say i was there yeah, <laughs> yeah. so i do feel you... like that with my firebird sometimes to be honest mm -hmm. with you because mm -hmm. I, I may jump up to like one of my newer vultures if i want that stability and i always kind of just forget or like if i'm throwing like a distance over stable shot i'm going to the evader so it's like it's in this like this sneaky window where i'll be like oh yeah firebird forgot i have that in here so yeah. I, I get that. I get that sentiment a lot. Um, so do you find that when you're in a shot where the TL is supposed to shine, that it's much more of a decision of, do I just put more on the hex? Do I take some off of the Valkyrie or throw the TL? Is that usually like the, the trio that's in that decision making? Yeah. Yeah. It'll, it'll kind of bounce between, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, the leopard TL and hex for, for about that distance. Cause I, I'm getting the mm -hmm. Valkyrie to push a little further. Okay. Um, makes sense. But that it's kind of like the, well, I, I should do the TL, but I really like throwing the hex. So I'm going to throw the hex, try and put a little bit more on it. And then I'll, I'll pull the TL out. It's like, well, arbitrary second throw from the same spot. What would this do? Like, mm -hmm. Oh, I should have thrown my second shot first. <laughs> yeah. If that isn't disc golf, I don't know yeah. what it is. <laughs> Same. Um, so, okay. So jumping up to the Valkyrie, then uh, the Thunderbird and the Sidewinder, you were saying do very similar things, just depending on if you threw a backhand forehand yeah. and they can flip to the both sides. Is the Thunderbird the one that is more so the one that like is a little more reliable both sides? If you just like, if you needed it to go right, you could just throw it on a forehand, you needed to go left throw on a backhand uh yeah i i think the for me the thunderbird is as i call it i call it the chunderbird because it's just like it goes and it's like mm, i'm out of here and just you know exit stage right or stage mm -hmm. left um mm -hmm. and, and i'm i'm i use it more of a pending on how far it is before i need it to go right i mean if it's mm. if it's a hard right hand turn on on a hole then it's i'm i'm using the thunderbird if it's got a mm -hmm. little more distance and it needs to go right or left then i'm going to use the sidewinder but the thunderbird i'm using for like go 10 feet go right or go 10 feet go left because mm -hmm. that's what it does and i'm like i i don't know why people like this disc and i get people do like it i'm sure it works really well for people that are have mastered the whole Heiser to Anheuser release of it. And for me, I'm just like, 
mm, this is what it does. And yeah. all right, it's it's in the creek. Or hey, I found the first tree, you know, you know, three hundred feet to the right. Mm -hmm. I feel that that that's a, that's a very you very universal feeling. I think for a lot of us, Paul. So don't don't feel too bad on that one. So like, and then now once we get above these nine speeds, we're really in the center line here of like pretty neutral discs. We kind of, kind of talked about the beast and the turn, but you also have the wave and the strike that are kind of on that center line. If you want to briefly give us like what those do differently than the turn and the beast. And then I'm really curious about this random astronaut all the way over on the understable side. <laughs> chilling out, chilling out in blank space, yeah. some might say. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so where do you want to start? Okay, we heard about your beast and your turn. So, let, what about the wave and the strike? They're kind of like the two other in between spots between those discs. Okay. So, when are you using the wave and strike? Um, I'm using the wave when it's more of a forehand type shot because I I'm able to put a little more. I think it's Anheuser where the wing is up from your hand, right? Yep. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm. Put a little Anheuser on it with the wave so I can kind of get it to turn a little bit. Then it kind of comes back and straight. Um, when I need a little more distance, I'm using the wave. Um, that's that's what that one's doing for me. For is backhand for the wave. It, mm -hmm. it, it'll go and then I find the wave to be, for me and my throw and my arm speed, I find the wave to be, I guess, a little more overstable when I do backhand. But forehand, it's kind of like it's balanced out where it's, you know, stable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I want to hear about your strike really quick. And then I have a thought on your wave that I'd like to share with okay. you. But tell us about your strike. My strike is strictly a backhand disc only. Um, okay. It's, it's my backhand headwind disc. Um, that makes sense. I, I'm, I'm getting it to go. I, there's some people I played with, they, they were pooping all over the strike. And I was like, well, Hey, that's what I'm going to throw. And they're like, Oh, sorry, man. I didn't know you had one. I'm <laughs> like, that's fine. Not everybody likes everything in everyone's bag. I mean, if we all threw the same thing, it would be kind of boring. So Absolutely. That, that's what my strike is. It's my, it's my backhand headwind. I need it to go straight and then kind of finish off left. I I've tried forehanding it a couple times and for me it just it feels like it gets over torqued and it's just like i'm out mm. and just mm. runs away and it's heading back to the parking lot i think this is where we kind of see that equation of here's the distance you're throwing here's the arm speed this disc requires although if you're throwing it and getting up to speed the strike's going to turn for a lot of people but it has a ton of glide but it, for you, it's going to be a headwind disc. I think it just kind of highlights like using the speed of the disc in a different way than others would. So you're using it as your headwind fighter. So you, it's very overstable for you. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of using that to your advantage. Where it, and it probably feels pretty good in your hand, if I'm guessing, is why you keep using it. But you're like, hey, it feels good in my hand. And I can guarantee this is going to be over an overstable backhand mm -hmm. disc for me. So I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, going back to the wave for a second. The wave is the disc that it it's like this intriguing disc to me all the time because I watch my youngest Eli, he's 10 years old and he can outdrive me five out of 10 times with his wave. Mm -hmm. But he, he has a, he has two fission waves in his bag. One is a little bit more overstable than the other for some reason, but he'll use one on forehand and one on backhand, but he can throw it so far. And I hear, a, I hear a lot of people say great things about the fission wave. Um, I've not got on that train yet. Um, 11 speeds are a little weird for me. I think it's just more of that than anything else. But um, have you tried the fission wave versus the proton wave? Because I think the proton plastic is giving you a little more over stability. I have not tried it the uh, the it in fission. And between the hex and the, that wave, those were my first like non-Innova purchases. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think maybe if you get an opportunity to check out the fission wave, definitely look into that. Okay. I, maybe, and I don't know if you agree, Robbie, but I think it would give you like another and if you like the wave the proton wave great then you can have two of them because i think the fission wave will react a little bit differently than you're used to with the proton wave okay yeah it definitely depends on the weight for sure i think where a lot of people really lean into like a fission wave is like a 
something in the 160 class, mm -hmm. you really see mm -hmm. in the 160 class, you can get up to that 11 speed drops to more feeling like a nine speed type deal. Mm -hmm. And you can really just yam on it for forehand and backhand. Okay. Pretty, pretty fun disc. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's where you're kind of coming into that realm of, and then if you have that shot, then maybe the Valkyrie and the Beast just kind of disappear and you just have two different waves okay. for those different shots that are covering it. You need, I, and I don't know for sure, maybe you hate it, I don't know, but yeah. I would probably encourage you to try out a Fission Wave in like that 160 class and just see mm -hmm. what it does for you. I mean, if you have a good local use section, you can probably find one if you can't find a new yeah, one. I'll, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll check for one. I mean, that yeah, was on the f a, a lot of it when I first got into disc golf. It was the whole got stuck in the whole noob trap of like, oh, you want to go far? Let's let's get the twenty seven speed. Let's let's get that one. Mm -hmm. It's like that's the truth. Well, it says twenty seven. Why didn't it go? You know, twenty seven hundred feet. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. This this disc yeah. is broken. What's wrong with it? Yeah, I agree. And, and speaking it, of a broken disc, <laughs> tell us about the astronaut. <laughs> what what? What's going on with the astronaut? It, it just seems all the way out by itself in, in your bag. So my astronaut, um, I got this one when I was kind of starting to really like explore the whole like understable world. And mm -hmm. uh, I was playing um, doubles with a, with a guy in Chicago because I travel a lot for work. So I was playing in Chicago um, and he's like, here, try this one. It's understable. See if you like it. I chucked it one time. It went further than everything else I had in my bag. And I was like, okay, I'm going to get one of those uh, off of that one throw. And mm -hmm. I got it. It's now pretty much like it's my tailwind and forehand only disc. Um, okay. I will try and backhand it every once in a while, but it's just kind of like, mm, no, forehand is the way to go. And I, if I measure with you disc, I'm probably getting my furthest flight now with that astronaut. Okay. But, yeah, you know, I, I don't exactly know how accurate measuring with you disc is, so. Plus yeah. or minus 16 feet. Okay. Yeah. Roughly. Like I said, my furthest throw could be 300 feet. It could be, you know, 120 feet. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. It's, uh, the astronaut is definitely a fun one. It's very, it's very sale-esque to me in terms mm -hmm. of very flippy, very understable. Um, but when hit right, there's just no disc that does mm -hmm. like no type of disc that does what it does. And it yeah. just that, that allure of that perfect flight yeah, is what just keeps it in the bag. Yeah. It may only happen one in every three throws, yeah, it, it, but by golly, is it awesome. It, in the mm -hmm. round I played yesterday, it said, I'm going to go. I know the baskets over here, but I'm going to go over that way. And it just sort of kept going. I'm like, okay, it's going to come back. And it started to come back like 80 feet too far. And it was just like, what? Yeah, gum. And then the other one, I was like, okay, I, I can kind of get this one kind of straight to, to get between this Mando with the astronaut and through it. And it just, mm, I'm going to go wider than Mando and I'm going to go, you know, 40 feet past it. I'm like, hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the closer shot, but I have to go back to the mm -hmm. drop where it's further. <laughs> I get that. Yeah. I get that. No. So, Brad, you tried out two discs today. I did. All right. We're going to be talking about understable putters today okay. for you, Paul. So, through the spin. Okay. And then I also threw the proxy. Okay. The people's beloved proxy. Um. So I, I have experience with a proxy. Proxy is a, a disc that will come in and out of my bag, usually as I'm trying to season new envies, which mm -hmm. is kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, through both of those, what do we think, Robbie? What questions do you have for me? Yeah, so the the space we were looking for is I was looking at the mid-ranges we had and the putters you had, and I was like, all right, so the glitch, by far the flippiest putter he has in his bag but getting a glitch on like a power or like a more of a quote distance line can be kind of tough, especially mm -hmm. on an understable flight, because I feel like the glitch has a surprising amount of stability to it when you actually throw it. Mm -hmm. But if you try to yam on it to get it to turn over and things like that, it can get real squirrely over there. Yeah. And so then it was like, all right, well, he has all these mid ranges, but I don't know how flippy all these mids are actually going to be uh, in terms of understability. So what if we went with something that, 
can kind of serve in that understable putter slot as well as mess around with the mids mm-hmm. in case his forehand isn't super developed. Uh, obviously, the zone can kind of fill some slots there. But mm-hmm. one thing is like a lot of times people will step up to a hole that moves for right-handed players that moves left to right, and they just automatically assume it's a forehand when it might be a backhand turnover uh, mm-hmm. is actually the shot. So with that in mind, Brad, uh, one of them was, or they're not both electron or they are both electron. They both are electron. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So going for knowing that like Paul's in Idaho, colder environment, mm-hmm. how do you feel about electron in the cold right off the that, bat? And that's, I didn't know you're from, I'm sorry, is Iowa or Idaho? Idaho. Idaho. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know you're in colder climate. Um, we just have, it has to happen to be colder here mm-hmm. and i know for me um my i love my eclipse envies but this year they came out of the bag and i put electron in just because I, it does have the grip and i i feel like my only complaint with um the eclipse plastic is it does get slick so uh, and even some of the neutron for me in the winter so i, I think grippiness is going to be great for you and those and it, it feels good in the summer too so i think it's not one mm-hmm. you have to pull in and out electron is going to feel good for you either way um, so I think electron plastic is a great plastic for you. Mm-hmm. It doesn't look like you really have experimented with electron either. No, I have not. So it'll be, it'll be good for you to, to feel there also. Okay. Um, so I, I think that's great. So shot shape, the, the ideal shot shape we were looking for was like flippy turnover putter. Mm-hmm. Uh, how did these do on that line? Okay. So first of all, I want to highlight like the proxy glide is 3.5 and the spin is four. I definitely felt like the proxy had more glide. Mm. And um, every time, yeah, I just want to stay in the air a little bit more. The spin just kept getting smacked down. And I don't know. It Again, could be me too. I'm not saying it couldn't be user error, but the proxy, and it could be just be f- some familiarity. There's like proxy and envy feel very similar in the hand, just feel more comfortable throwing it. And I think I was probably like babying the spin a little bit more because it was more understable. Um, significantly more understable. Um, so like, and I figure that's what shot we were looking for. So I was kind of focused on like, what's a straight shot look like with this, just as flat as I can get it. And then what is like a big turnover shot look like? So as flat as I could get it, obviously spin out of my hand was flat and just turning right on the right hand back then. Um, the proxy, which is something I love about the proxy is it'll go very straight. And it, if you hit it hard enough, it on flat, it will turn a little bit. Mm-hmm. But it's not going to really turn a whole lot. It's like a very off the shelf, very like neutral disc, and maybe has like a pinch of like finish, brand new anyway. Um, so, and that's kind of what I like about the proxy is you can hit the proxy pretty hard. And I always feel like I can throw like a max, well, 85, 90% power shot with a proxy and not worry about a burning over. Mm-hmm. Whereas the spin definitely like had to be careful on power and angle. Um, when I did throw them on these big sky Anheuser shots, that's the thing I love about the proxies. You, it, it's a it's a twofold. It's like a, a risk and a reward. But the proxy, you really have to at least off the shelf. You have to commit to the Anheuser line. Like it'll make sure you're like okay, mm-hmm. and you don't have to worry about so much. Like oh, did I put on too much Anheuser? Mm-hmm. Because you're probably put it on enough, and it will just like kind of turn. But it's not gonna like it's not gonna leave much of this angle. It's gonna kind of just glide like that. Mm-hmm. And then it eventually will settle out. Whereas the spin, if I did like these big sky Anheuser, it's, it's like it's taking that sharp angle and just like continuing to fade and like okay. add a couple like cut rolls away with it. Um, if I wasn't careful on the angle, um, Heiser flip wise is really easy to Heiser flip the spin. The proxy would almost kind of just hold the angle. It would flip up a little bit for me if I gave it like baby Heiser, it would flip up. Um, but they're like kind of also maybe a, at least for me a little hard to Heiser flip accurately initially Mm -hmm. but they are very straight if i just throw them on my normal throw which is like a little tiny hyzer a little tiny anhyzer depending how much i mess up um i think what i'm leading to a robbie um without like completely jumping ahead i really like the the proxy for you and the reason i like the proxy for you is um you can really start learning to commit to like a anhyzer shot and really like Okay, what does it look like? Okay, I would normally throw a zone on this shot, this left to right moving hole. Mm-hmm. But what happens if I throw this big Anheuser backhand shot with a proxy? And you can put some power into it. You don't have to play this game of 
which is what I feel like gets me in a lot of trouble. And hopefully a lot of other like newer slash couple year players can um, like relate to this. I'm starting to learn shot angle a little bit more. But it's like some disc, I'm like, okay, well, I can put it on Anheuser, but I only can throw 50% power at this disc. But this disc, I can put on Anheuser and throw 100% power, and it will just turn a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's always this guesswork. I like, and I think that's why I like the Hex. It's why I like the Origin, is I feel like I can yam on those discs, and I know that they're going to do the thing I want them to do. Mm -hmm. And I would rather arrow to the, like, 90% 90% power side right now than the 50% power side. Mm-hmm. And that's why Jason beat up me and everyone else on the weekly this week is he is like kind of master that touchy, like floaty 50% shot. And I just don't have that yet. And it sounds like from the shots you have also that maybe this proxy would benefit you because you can like throw it a little harder. Um, you can throw a very straight shot. So there will be a less of a gap between like your, glitch and like maybe your hex you know because you can really get something there um it also give you this like nice turnover shot you can do without worrying about it burning over if you give it a little too much angle so i think there's a lot of utility and i always like to recommend a shot or a disc that would cover multiple shots there was nothing wrong with the spin Mm -hmm. other than i just feel like it's kind of like a a one-trick pony at least for me was just like this very understable shot and that's kind of it whereas the proxy has a lot of different potential i think for you and what's cool about the proxy is if you love it and you start beating it in and it does get fli- really flippy, then you'll have this really flippy putter. And then you can just throw another electron one in there and know you have like that more neutral. And I think what your bag, in my opinion, would be great for since you don't love carrying a lot of discs and you're kind of like stuck in this neutral land is you're, you can probably start again, like with a wave and maybe with the proxy, even with the hex, you can start like, cycling some of these discs and getting Mm -hmm. discs you're familiar with that you like can feel familiar with and subconscious confidence and then start like cycling them to give them different versions of stability so i think proxy might be a good experiment for you for a lot of different reasons that sounds good i I think that was one i i actually looked at when i was on a travel job in in nebraska i think i i picked it up and i i held it and i was just kind of like i don't know if this is gonna like replace my other putters and like uh, i i don't know but look at these other ooh shiny discs you know they they got sharp edges they'll they'll go further let's let's get a sharp edge disc Mm -hmm. yeah my my question mark would be and the nice thing is because you get to travel so much paul that this will be true um is brad mentioned when it beats in you could have this flippy putter Mm -hmm. i'm always a fan of something that has a little more stability being beat in. I understand from the immediate need that makes it tough because it's like, if I were, if I had to put a disc in your bag today, that would help you. It would be the spin versus the proxy, Mm -hmm. because I think that the proxy and your G star AVR are going to fly somewhat similar today, Mm -hmm. but because you're going to play a lot or because you're going to play and you're going to play in a lot of different areas, especially because it's an electron proxy, it will beat in faster because it's that base plastic. So Mm -hmm. I would say the trick would be feel free when you're throwing them, like throw it right alongside your G star AVR, throw them side by side. That Mm -hmm. way you'll see the difference. And uh, like every time you're going to throw your G star AVR, throw your proxy, every time you're through proxy, throw your G star AVR and you'll watch how fast, like, cause it's just going to take a couple solid tree hits Mm-hmm. and that proxy is going to start moving a good bit differently. Um, and that's mm-hmm. not, and the other beautiful part is it's base plastic. So it's also the cheapest to mm-hmm. replace okay. right, out there. Um, and so, it has a very similar hand feel to the Envy. Yeah. And that's where it really comes alive. And I, I keep Envy's in my bag and cycle those because, and Robbie and I were talking about this earlier, like an electron Envy will beat into where like a, off the shelf proxy will be pretty much. Okay. And yeah. that's and so if you and the hand feels very similar. So if you really like the proxy, then you can start working on that whole thing. And it may just kind of change your like uh, approach throwing putter game entirely, which okay. is would be cool. So that'd be good. Yeah. So awesome, Paul. Well we will uh be snagging an address from you and get this in the mail. Uh would sure you be willing to come back on and let us know uh absolutely how the proxy flies? Absolutely. Absolutely. Come well, on. Well, hey, we want to thank you for being a very long-time listener. Thanks for being patient on the submission form. You you made it. 
it took 91 episodes, but you made it. <laughs> and we're very grateful for you and all of those out there like you, Paul. So thanks for coming on and we will see you soon. Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Another one. Yeah, no. Hey, 91 of them, man. It's I'm going to keep saying that in this episode, I guess, but it's, it, I know last month, last week was episode 90, but something like turning it over, like to episode 91, has got me feeling like, wow, a lot of episodes. It it feels like a top 10 countdown to mm-hmm. like, you know, if I'm like, oh, I'm going to watch, uh, I'll, I'll use Jason here. If I'm going to watch board game geek and they're doing like a top 100 board games, it's like, mm-hmm. sure. I want to know what their 91 through or their 191 are. Mm-hmm. But once you get to like, all right, here's my number 10. Here's mm-hmm. my number nine. Like that's, that's where we're in right now. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to exactly. say we're in end game because we're nowhere near, but we are, we're approaching triple digit episodes. Mm-hmm. Feels awesome. Yeah. Very, very excited. So, so um, yeah, let, let's, I'm gonna. We need to make a survey, I think, or we need to make a and uh, a poll. We won't do it this episode, but we'll think about this going toward episode 100. Maybe what we do for episode 100 is like make a form, have people vote on their favorite episode or their like their top 10 episodes or something like that, and then we maybe try to get those guests on. I don't know. Or okay. we do it live. I like the live. I like the live thing. We'll see. Yeah, there are so many options. Like I said, y'all let us know in the comments. Uh, let us know in comments, let us know in reviews, things like that. Mm-hmm. We'll be happily checking those. Um, another way that you can gladly support what we're doing here uh, is that we have in the bag merch that is available mm-hmm. at foundationdisc.com. Really, really cool. We have gotten the like the images and the license to all that. I've got some in the bag merch on the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brad's got some in the bag merch on the way. I'm excited. Foam trucker hats, guys. Mm-hmm. Foam trucker hats. What a beautiful piece of apparel and we have with the in the bag logo yep and hey if you're a coffee we got coffee cups now too i'm not a coffee drinker i'll put something else in mine like tea or something but can't wait to get mine and yeah make sure you check those out a lot of different designs we have t-shirts hoodies hats coffee cups you name it. it's on there all of that directly supports what we do here on in the bag so we greatly thank you ahead of time also it's all-star week we filmed that a couple weeks ago but the videos are out this week you probably have watched all of them at this point you know, I don't know who your favorite team was. If you're watching right now, it's Team Hunter. Team Hunter, team all Hunt, both of us here, Team Hunt. Um, so make sure you check those out. Those are all available. They're not these exact shirts, but they're you know to support your favorite team, Team Hunter, Team Brody, Team Trevor. Um, also, the Grip Lock versus um, Tour Life merch off is what I'll call it is still going on. It looks like Grip Lock has a strong lead. So if you're Grip Lock fans, lock in get some more of that make sure they lock in their lead if you're a tour life fan you got some work to do so hey it's almost friday it's a good time to rep some tour life merch so as always thank you all for going to foundationdiscs.com and checking out all of our apparel and exciting i kind of teased it earlier in the episode but we now clear, uh, carry millennium discs so we're very excited about that um uh star wars geek also a bird of prey be- geek i'm very excited about the the falcon the millennium falcon if you will um but I threw I threw one the other day, um, a Helio, which is Halo version, and I threw it very far. So we'll we'll see if it makes the bag. I need something with like a little bit of stability, little little faster, so it might make the bag um, there. But we'll see how it goes. Um, a lot of great. I think we have we have a, a good taste. I reached out to Millennium to give us kind of like, hey, what do I, if if I'm bringing Millennium to our our uh, fans, what mm-hmm. do they need to throw? So yeah. we've got some like Dracos, we have some Vilas, we have um, us, Orions, the Scorpius, the Falcon, like all the ones you've probably seen, you know, if you're a Heimberg fan, you've seen quite a few of these being yeah. thrown. So Draco is a more friendly firebird is mm-hmm. how I would describe that. So yeah, it, we have some glow ones that are very cool. Yeah. Um, I'm and excited the Vela, about it. The Vela was designed to replace his straight eagles. Mm-hmm. So for the mortals out there, right. the Vela is going to fly like an eagle, right. uh, but for him, it's a bullet. Yeah, it's it's crazy, and there's the ones we have are so flat. It's kind of funny, um, but yeah. So make sure you check those out. There's some other cool uh, the Ganon uh, mini stamped Discmania dropped this week as well. We also um, put up some graces, I believe, uh, Kristen Tatar graces that we just happened to get our hands on um, from Trilogy. So. 
lot, as always, a lot of cool stuff. There is some uh, five year anniversary stuff left. There's a few foundation custom stamp stuff left. So make sure you check that out. And hey, after you grab it all, you get it in the mail. Uh, make sure you go out, you feel tested, and whatever's good. Keep it in the bag. We'll see you next episode.